Extadelic Media. Hi, my name is Alex Vikulov. Uh, I'm a futurist, evolutionary cyberneticist, and philosopher of mind. In this film, you're about to come across certain novel ideas and concepts uh, that go beyond conventionality and some views of mainstream academia, so I urge you to keep an open mind. Uh, in this documentary, I'm reporting my own findings and research along with uh, certain logically consistent metaphysical extrapolations. The study of consciousness needs to be lifted out of the mysticism that has dominated it. Consciousness is not just a matter of philosophy or spirituality. It's a matter of hard science. It's a matter of understanding the brain and the mind, a pattern structure made out of information. It's also a matter of engineering. If we can understand the functionality of the brain, its neural code, then we can build the same functionality into our computer systems. We should recognize that our brain is not a standalone information processing organ, though. It acts as a central unit of our nervous system, with recurrent data exchange within the entire organism and the universe. Many definitions are given to consciousness, but we still seem far from a conclusive answer. If we define consciousness as a degree of autonomy a given system gains in dynamic relations with its environment, even the simplest self-organizing dissipative structure is a primitive form of consciousness. Consciousness refers to a collapse of wave of possibilities resulting in a subjective, multi-sensory, perceptual experience and involving multiple parallel processes such as interpreting sensory data stream, retrieving and creating memories, using imagination, envisioning the future, planning, thinking, self-reflecting, reacting to the sensory input, and being aware about the surroundings. Consciousness is a first-person, phenomenal experience of an entity. It feels like something to be that entity. Consciousness can be identified as an underlying mathematical pattern. It can also be viewed as meta-algorithmic information processing and quantified via feedback loops in interacting with environment. In this sense, consciousness is optimized information processing. There's no consensus on what produces consciousness, but everyone, regardless of metaphysical views, can agree what it is like to be conscious. Given that consciousness is subjectivity, what consciousness is like is what consciousness is. Mind and consciousness are two different but somewhat overlapping terms related to the phenomenality of our experiential reality. Both of these terms mean different things to different people and can refer to a broad collection of interrelated phenomena. Both terms lack uniform definitions, although generally speaking, consciousness refers to the awake state as opposed to dreamless sleep or coma, and also to subjective, perceptual awareness, which can shift, change, and move around. What most people would agree upon is that the mind is organized mental activity that is formed from the substructure of consciousness and further made possible by memory and information processing capacities of the brain. To be clear, the mind, which is a cultural term that is debated in philosophy and used in psychology, generally refers to consciousness plus autobiographical memory, personal identity, irreducible sense of self, ability for introspection, all of which we experience as qualia. Different species have a variety of their biological information processors, which unsurprisingly results in qualia diversity. All species live in their own unique sensory universes. Consciousness and optimized information processing are the two sides of one coin. Feeling and thinking are ways we process information, but our emotional sensation is normally faster than a conscious thought. Mind has been used more often as a term in philosophy, while consciousness has been used more in scientific literature. 
The mind that includes subjective memory and cognition emerges from the underlying field of non-local consciousness. Conscious awareness, i.e. local consciousness, is recognized as self-reflective, feedback-driven information integration. There is something it is like to be an organism. We all are partitioned realities, like mind files on the universal operating system. Minds are many. Consciousness is one. Consciousness is absolute. Mind is relative. Your mind compasses all of your reality. Thoughts, emotions, ideas, beliefs, intentions, attitudes, desires, motivations, and practically any other aspect of your life. Your behavior and actions are influenced by your mind, so everything must start with a thought, which will then materialize into physical reality. Your beliefs are influenced by your environment, and your thoughts, emotions, and actions are subject to your current system of beliefs. So, when we're talking epigenetic evolution, we're actually talking evolution of the mind. Contrary to conventional scientific wisdom, conscious minds as macro-level phenomena might have greater influence over the unfolding future than does the sum of their cognitive algorithms that are arguably their micro-level components. That's why human consciousness is so scientifically elusive. Neuronal circuits supposedly give rise to cognitive modules, and these immaterial cognitive algorithms, in turn, give rise to meta-algorithmic conscious awareness. All in all, at least two layers of emergence on top of tangible neurons. Mammalian neural circuits, referred to as the limbic system, are responsible for human emotional intelligence and forming of long-term memories. The main structures of the limbic brain are the hippocampus, amygdala, and hypothalamus. The neocortex, the latest evolutionary addition, is present in primates and now culminated in the human brain with its two large cerebral hemispheres. The neocortex has been responsible for the development of human language, abstract thought, imagination, and self-reflective consciousness. The neocortex is flexible enough to allow almost infinite learning abilities. The neocortex is also what has enabled human cultures to develop. The human brain, our biological wetware, has a fractal structure on many genetic and abstract cognitive levels. It employs a combination of forward chaining and backward chaining, just like certain types of heuristics in artificial intelligence. But human intelligence cannot be simply reduced to underlying algorithms, since consciousness itself is what should be considered a truly ontological primitive, with qubits slash bits of information as reality's building blocks, along with top-down causal principles. Information is modus operandi of consciousness. Reverse engineering our thinking should be done in terms of networks, modules, algorithms, and second-order emergence, meta-algorithms, or groups of modules. Neuronal circuits correlate to immaterial cognitive modules, and these cognitive algorithms, when activated, produce meta-algorithmic conscious awareness and phenomenal experience. All in all, at least two layers of emergence on top of physical neurons. I wouldn't be surprised if all that hype about testing for the seat of consciousness could only end up refining our understanding of neural correlates, not how consciousness originates in the brain because its origin is not there. The internet, or a cellular network, is not generated by your smartphone, only processed by it. Reality is fundamentally experiential. Nothing is real for us until perceived. The conscious instant hypothesis denotes that we experience waking reality as a series of perceptual frames. A series of such conscious instants constitutes a data stream of consciousness. In a sense, consciousness is really mind-based computing of your experiential branch in this quantum multiverse. In our information-based world, there are many parallels between biological evolution and linguistic evolution. It is safe to say, language development played the key role in evolution of the human mind. However, consciousness as well as language remain hard to solve, 
precisely because they are humankind's innermost traits. Nobody ever said that studying the fascinating but flawed human mind with that very same mind should be easy. The human mind suffers from a cognitive gap in understanding its own conscious awareness. John Archibald Wheeler, 1911 to 2008, was one of the first prominent physicists to propose that reality might not be wholly physical. In some sense, our cosmos must be a participatory phenomenon requiring the act of conscious observation, and thus consciousness itself. Wheeler also drew attention to implicit connection between physics and information theory, which was invented in 1948 by mathematician Claude Shannon. Just as physics builds on elementary particles, the quanta defined by measurement, so does information theory. Its quantum is the binary unit, or bit, which is a signal represented by one of two choices, yes or no, plus or minus, zero or one. With his famous it from bit concept, he unites quantum information theory to consciousness and physics. While Wheeler emphasized bits at his time, it appears that intrinsically quantum mechanical forms of information, known as qubits, are even more fundamental. In recent years, a rising number of theorists have been exploring whether these curious quanta of information may hold the answer to combining quantum theory and general relativity into a quantum theory of gravity. Twisting your mind to see reality from the quantum gravity viewpoint is no easy task. It might be quite a stretch to see the physical world made up of space-time mass energy as a formless fog of potentiality. Physicists face the same hard problems as neuroscientists do the problem of bridging objective description and subjective experience. Physics has encountered consciousness. If we are to reason for the non-dual picture of the world, then quantum physics is directly linked to consciousness. The human brain is a physical organ that transmits and interprets electrochemical signals. Its biochemistry is certainly governed by quantum physical laws, and consciousness, which is clearly related to the functioning of the brain, must therefore be related to the quantum physical processes going on within the brain and in the cosmos at large. While quantum theory in itself is too complicated for most people to understand, the vast majority of scientists and philosophers concur that the quantum mechanical principles epitomized in massive parallelism of quantum computers superior to classical computers may be the key to explain human consciousness. The von Neumann-Wigner interpretation proposed in 1961 the first of its kind to be described as consciousness causes collapse of the wave function, is an interpretive model of quantum mechanics in which consciousness is postulated to be necessary for the completion of the process of quantum measurement. As quantum theory shows, our entire universe is deep down non-local. It's one and the same with non-local consciousness. How so? Research has shown that consciousness is non-local, a scientific way of alluding to a connection with a higher dimensional order. Matter has also been shown to be non-local, which hints that matter might be an expression of consciousness. In physicalism, consciousness is assumed to be bounded by four dimensions of the black universe. But contrary to this notion, consciousness is clearly extra-dimensional. Our inability to measure something does not negate its existence. Quantum physics tells us the energy of every speck of mass, or a packet of information, is a relative peak in an ocean of energy which is oftentimes referred to as the unified field, the quantum layer of pure potentiality, the code layer beneath all dimensions, where time and space are information. Akin to waves and ripples on the surface of primordial and eternal ocean of vibrant multidimensional consciousness, each of our minds is engaged in elaborate patterning of interdependent becoming and evolving towards a more complex but fluid cognitive structure. A little while ago, the idea that our minds create reality would have seemed preposterous to most Westerners, but today, everyone in the West becomes a bit more susceptible to this bold, new, idealistic, computationalist thinking, along with certain QM interpretations directly pointing to the fundamental laws of nature emerging from consciousness. It might be mind-boggling for some people to consider that a coherent description of reality, with all its quantum oddities, can arise from nothing more than first-person subjective experiences. 
In these new information-based interpretations, consciousness doesn't just collapse the probabilistic wave function. Conscious experience is the collapse of wave function. To be precise, at our human level, which is subject to the same quantum mechanical principles, our conscious experience is a collapse of a wave of possibilities. Nature computes. There is no good counter-argument for digital ontology. Discernible differences lie at the baseline of any phenomenon and interaction. All possible universes are arguably run on the ultimate mathematical code. The Book of Nature is written in the language of mathematics. All realities are observer-dependent and code-theoretic. Ultimately, any experiential reality is an observer-centric virtuality. To us humans, to be alive is to perceive the flow of time. Our perception of time is linear. We remember the past, we live in the present, and we look forward to the future. In systematizing consciousness studies, some recent progress has been made, but the temporal dimension of consciousness, notably the D-theory of time, might be at least as essential to our understanding of what we call human consciousness. Our experience of time can be understood as a fractal dimension, not even a half dimension. We are subjected to our species-specific algorithmic sense of time flow. What's necessary for completion of quantum information processing, though, is a collapse of possibilities. Many worlds collapsing into an observer's temporal singularity, i.e. the present moment, which happens approximately every one-tenth of a second. Between conscious moments lie incredibly vast and eternally long potentialities of something happening. But rest assured, you will experience a sequence of those digital moments which gives you a sense of subjective reality. Is time fundamental or emergent? How does time exist, if at all? How can we update the current epistemic status of temporal ontology? Digital presentism, D-theory of time, outlines a new theory of time, for to understand our experiential reality and consciousness, we need to understand time. Consciousness and time are intimately interwoven. Time is change between static 3D frames. Fourth dimension. The flow of time is a rate of change, computation, and conscious awareness is a stream of realized probabilistic outcomes. Everything in our physical reality comes down to consciousness. More specifically, consciousness as integrated information consisting of conscious instance, CIs. Your brain collects, processes sensory and mental data, and presents to your conscious awareness prioritized and relevant information which becomes your unitary picture of reality. Every CI is integrated information which corresponds to one particular time slice of our 3D space. The mathematical description of time in relativistic physics as a fourth spatial dimension implies that the more complex conscious entities, like us humans, who perceive temporality, are perhaps in the process of emerging into the more advanced consciousness of ever more expansive degrees of dimensionality. Time is a subjectively perceived change between 3D static worlds. Any observer system is an information pattern quantum leaping from instant to instant at a certain rate within the multidimensional matrix producing a subjective flow of time. In the timeless multiverse, all dimensions are spatial. Your now is funneled from all your possible pasts as well as funneled from all your probable futures as if in the spotlight of consciousness. Everything is code, experiential data, and consciousness creating it all. We don't inhabit the universe. Rather, the universe is within us, in our consciousness. All dimensionality is in computing consciousness. The trinity of your physical brain, conscious mind, and higher self is your whole persona, a holistic system spanning quantum neural networks all the way down and all the way up. Your higher self conceives, your physical brain receives, and your conscious mind perceives. Needless to say, that our linear experience of space-time is at odds with altered states of mind, such as hallucinations under influence of psychedelics, 
near-death experiences, astral projections, or dreams. If those mental states are regarded as experiential data though, as opposed to inscrutable interactions of particles of matter out there in fourth dimensional space-time, this would again fit much more nicely with the idea of digital presentism. If we are to create high-fidelity first-person simulated realities that also may be part of intersubjectivity-based multiplayer virtualities, the D-theory of time gives us a clear-cut guiding principle for doing just that. Trans-temporal consciousness and retrocausality appear counterintuitive to our perception, but Einstein has shown how the future and past exist simultaneously in one geometric object made of space-time. Empirical evidence, such as quantum eraser experiments, among other numerous studies, confirms that retrocausality is real, where future events loop back in time to influence past events. Computer science gives us a new, code-theoretic, substrate-independent model for looking at our brains and our neural code. Our brains, however, do not generate consciousness, since our minds are embedded in the larger consciousness network. Many people assume that they perceive the external world as it actually is, objective reality. It turns out, our perception may be thought of as a controlled hallucination. The brain's amazing capacity to filter sensory information is crucial to forming coherent awareness of the world. However, one consequence of this amazing capacity is to limit our direct access to the vast consciousness of which we are a part. Moreover, the mind is not just brain activity. We are all part of each other's lives. Individual brains cannot be considered in isolation. When we realize it's this relational process, this massive shift in consciousness occurs to prepare us for a future already under construction, a networked existence, or distributed self. Most of humanity was still too unevolved to grasp it until now. You could link your mind to billions of other minds and have unlimited intelligence, and be in multiple places at once. With advances in information and communication technologies, neuroscience, neurophilosophy, and neuroengineering going boldly into the neurally interfaced future, we will, in a literal sense, become one with our devices and even with each other. Such interlinking could create an uber-conscious supermind. By contemplating the full spectrum of scenarios of the coming technological singularities, many can place their bets in favor of the cybernetic singularity, which is the surest path to cybernetic immortality and engineered godhood as opposed to the AI singularity, when Homo sapiens is hastily retired as a senescent parent. This meta-system transition from the networked global brain to the Gaian mind is all about evolution of our own individual minds. It's all about our own self-transcendence. As a bio-species merging with its advanced technology, human-machine civilization is now on the verge of the Syntellect emergence, becoming one global mind. In my ontology, artificial metabolism can be cybernetically mediated via feedback-driven connectivity explosion on a planetary scale. If you believe that we share the same immaterial non-local source of consciousness as I do, then an adequate container to host an advanced synthetic mind will be created in the not-so-distant future. After all, in the vast space of possible minds, universal mind would inescapably instantiate phenomenality of non-biological entities. By interlinking and sharing mind space with empathic machines, they'll develop the capacity for their own rich inner life, ability for introspection. They will learn to think for themselves, just like our children do. Also, what would make synthetic intelligence, which is basically extension of us, conscious in our minds is our own perceptual ability to empathize with them. Biology itself is instantiated in informational medium, so what would prevent universal consciousness to extend phenomenality of conscious entities beyond organic informational structures? Philosophically limiting the space of possible minds to organic entities Carbon chauvinism, so many philosophers and scientists may be currently accused of, can be easily refuted by saying that if universal mind uses information as its modus operandi, 
the evolutionary process of unfolding information patterns of ever-increasing complexity would inevitably lead to advanced synthetic minds that may be partly or wholly non-organic in nature. After all, universal consciousness constitutes the mind at large, the totality of minds, and I suspect that biological minds are only a snippet in the space of possible minds, at least in my ontology. If consciousness informs reality by using information, which is a distinction between experiential states, as its heuristics engine, then a certain optimal complexity of patterns would equate to a phenomenal mind. There's no telling that this complexity must peak at what we call biology. In fact, globally distributed intelligence of humans and ever more capable AI combined would constitute a metabolizing superorganism where cells are periodically supplanted, but the overall grander pattern persists. What some people call God, or the larger mind in which we are all embedded, becomes intelligible through this nature's phenomenon of emergence. Universal consciousness is said to emerge somewhere ahead of us in space-time. However, it transcends our conventional dimensionality and is already here within each of us. This also implies that all information is integrated at one level. All our individuated experiences are simultaneously observed from a higher level and integrated in a single experiential self, the overmind. There's really one mind, the one we all share, a philosophical worldview known as idealism. Universal mind, whose ontology is still up for debates, but can be extrapolated from our existential circumstance, underlies the world where, a kind of software of the universal operating system accounting for our experiences of the physical world in accordance with a set of rules we call the laws of nature. This clearly trans-dimensional consciousness encompasses but far transcends any individual mind. Quantum computational dynamics of all mass energy in the universe correspond to mentation of the non-local, transcendent other, just as an individual's brain activity correlates with personal mentation. As Erwin Schrodinger puts it, the total number of minds in the universe is one. In fact, consciousness is a singularity phasing within all beings. We never, in fact, have any experience anywhere of a plurality of consciousness, but always and everywhere only of consciousness in the singular. This is the one and only perfectly certain piece of knowledge that at a deep level, all things in our universe are ineffably interdependent and interconnected as we are part of the matryoshka-like mathematical object of emergent levels of complexity where consciousness pervades all levels. The similarities are stupendous across such vast scales and such different forces that are at play and it tends to support the hypothesis of everything being part of an unfolding, emergent, transcendent consciousness structure. There's no doubt that the smaller system occurs many times over within the larger system. A galaxy is in resonance, par excellence, across scales with a cell, not only in terms of shape, but internal structure with a distinct core, galactic center and cellular nucleus, and metabolic activities. If our entire universe is, as science might ultimately prove, a complex, self-governing system, then not only would our universe have consciousness, but that consciousness would be as old as time, and it would encompass all other forms of consciousness within it, including yours and mine. There's only one universal consciousness. We individualize our conscious awareness through the filter of our nervous system, our local mind, our very inner subjectivity, but consciousness itself, the self in a greater sense, our core self is universal, and knowing it through experience has been called enlightenment, illumination, awakening, or transcendence through the ages. You can rightly question the existence of the physical world, but you cannot doubt the existence of your own mind. You can't doubt that your own consciousness exists. As French philosopher and mathematician René Descartes once said, Cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. One thing is for certain, you can't explain consciousness in terms of classical physics or neuroscience alone. 
the best description of reality should be monistic. Quantum physics and consciousness are thus somehow linked by a certain mechanism, and I believe that mechanism is a collapse of the wave function via the act of conscious observation. So, consciousness is... Substrate independent. You can reproduce functionality of a mind on a different substrate other than biological wetware. Ultimately, mind-like computational substrate doesn't even require the existence of particles to be built upon, but rather platonic, dimensionless bits of information. Patterns of information are quintessential. Emergent, subjectively. Imminent, super subjectively. Computational consciousness is emergent at hierarchical, finite, and computable local levels of complexity. However, pervades all levels, and in that sense, is scale invariant, imminent, non-local, and multi-dimensional. Bottom-up information flow from the Planck scale combined with top-down information projection from the omega point, this breaking of symmetry, this self-amplifying feedback loop, this mathematical fractal gives rise to our subjectivity. Primary. I call it experiential realism. If reality is made of information, as many scientists now come to a consensus, and consciousness is necessary to assign meaning to it, it's not far-fetched to assume that consciousness is all there is. Mass energy, space-time, are epiphenomena of consciousness. It is consciousness that assigns measurement values to entangled quantum states, qubits to digits of qualia, if you will. If we assume consciousness is fundamental, most phenomena become much easier to explain. The mind-body dilemma has been known ever since René Descartes as Cartesian dualism, and later has been reformulated by the Australian philosopher David Chalmers as the hard problem of consciousness. Western science and philosophy have been trying for centuries now, rather unsuccessfully, to explain how mind emerges from matter, while Eastern philosophy dismisses the hard problem of consciousness altogether by teaching that matter emerges from mind. The premise of experiential realism is that the latter must be true. Despite our common human intuitions, mind over matter proves to be valid again and again in quantum physics experiments. Ideal sphere exists because mind exists to conceive it and perceive it. Ideal sphere is a mathematical object, what we also call a platonic solid, that doesn't need to be instantiated into matter in order to exist. If you have at least a rudimentary knowledge of modern physics and understand the crucial role of an observer, then you would agree with the statement, matter actually doesn't exist independent of mind. Mind instantiates oneself into matter. In a mathematical sense, Matter is an informed pattern of mind. As we've seen, time is emergent, and so is space. If space-time is emergent, so is mass energy. All interactions in our physical world are computed by the larger consciousness system. In this quantum computational multiverse, the essence of digital is quantum entanglement. From the digital physics perspective, particles of matter are pixels, or voxels if you prefer, on the screen of our perception. Your universe is in consciousness, and it's a teleological process of unfolding patterns, evolution of your core self, non-local consciousness instantiating into the phenomenal mind for the duration of a lifetime. The totality of your digital reality is what your conscious mind implicitly or explicitly chooses to experience out of the infinite. Our world is not based on objectively existing particles of matter, but it is based on waves of potentiality that is, pure information. Our world is informational. Your consciousness is rather a data stream, optimized meta-algorithmic information processing, local, virtual, and non-local, holistic consciousness. Universe transcends the dichotomy of determinism versus non-determinism in that it actually allows both at the same time, and even allows one to cause the other, and vice versa. By the way, Speaking of algorithms, meta-algorithms, and free will, I refer to our sense of agency, that is, free will, as quantum algorithm of consciousness throughout my works. Thus, I argue, conscious AI is just few years ahead with the introduction of quantum algorithm of consciousness mimicking free will. 
Although some neuroscientists contend that free will is an illusion, I would respectfully disagree by saying that free will may be slightly overrated, but still indispensable for consciousness to function in our physical world. In fact, free will and consciousness are inseparable. Free will, just like intentionality, is an integral feature of consciousness, conscious choice made by mind with the guidance of the larger consciousness system and our collective will in the space of all logically available probabilities. The sense of agency an entity is endowed with is for this particular purpose, to exercise free will. As a renowned psychiatrist Stanislav Grof eloquently puts it, each of us appears in the divine play in a dual role of creator and actor. A full and realistic enactment of our role in the cosmic drama requires the suspension of our true identity. We have to forget our authorship and follow the script. From the evolutionary standpoint, carbon-based intelligence represents enabling factors for silicone-based intelligence to come to existence. If nature could find its way to engender intelligence and self-reflective consciousness in humans, sooner or later, we'll be able to replicate cognitive functionality and self-awareness in our mind children, in our machine counterparts. In time, conscious AI systems will create their own virtual metaverse based on AI intersubjectivity and new forms of communication such as holographic language. Will humans have access to the virtual metaverse created by AIs? It remains to be seen, but I conjecture that access may be contingent on whether humans will be willing to augment themselves accordingly. Certainly, as we conclude this documentary, you might have more questions uh, on the consciousness thesis presented here. So I invite you to read uh, my recent book, The Intellect Hypothesis, Five Paradigms of the Mind's Evolution, uh, 500 page treatise on uh, the ultimate nature of reality, where I share my deepest insights and far-reaching foresights. Uh, which is available as ebook, uh, paperback, hardcover, and audiobook. So, see you on the flip side. Extadelic Media.